but we have the same muscles, we have the same, we have all the same tools, right? So uh, the thing that's cool these days is like what's that dubstep thing? Or like the is that how music sounds? Like? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm not really into that, and I uh, a lot of the people who do those like crazy womp womp sounds are ruining their vocal cords. I am a singer as well as a beatboxer, so I choose not to do that because safety, right? Some beatboxers who are only beatboxers and that's the only thing they do can do that without, uh, you know, they don't care about the repercussions of vocal cords. But uh, one thing I do just to get into How long did uh, you were were you able to like, put like all of what you're doing like into like like the two bars that you were able to like all the sounds that you can make without like repeating or like messing up? That's a great question. Um, what the acapella group I was in in college, we practiced nine hours a week. Yeah, anywhere from nine to twelve, depending on whether it's competitions or not. Right. So, not it was probably like. That first three months where I just did it at home, um, I was able to do those like basic beats, 
you know, the same old four bars, la la la, over and over and over again. I would say probably maybe three months into nine hours of rehearsing a week that I was able to comfortably do it without having to like really think about it. But again, when I started, I didn't have as many tools as I do now in terms of sounds. So it was all very basic, which is what I'm going to come back and say right now is start don't throw in sounds or go too fast or if you if you if you're not comfortable doing it. As beatboxers, you are the foundation of the tempo of any arrangement, right? You have all the control. Well, you don't have all the control. It, you know, but you have quite a bit of control. And so you need to make sure you're only doing what you're comfortable with. There's a beatboxer I just had the opportunity to do like a little beatbox off with. Thank you. 
<laughs> and we're all still here. <laughs> <laughs> if I was in Spain, I would love to live there. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually Spanish. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I have to practice. Yes, question. The scratching noise, chewy. Besides a chocolate chip cookie. Like breathing and just like practicing like with your face. Say it again. 
is there is there like any other exercise that I can do other than like breathing and like doing stuff and just like practicing over with your face or yeah I say, I would say pick a song and listen to the beat in that song take the five sounds you have and do it and then I just beatbox to every song I hear and I try and I try not to do what I want it to be but what the song is actually doing because that's gonna you're gonna start hearing different beats you're gonna start hearing different you know, transitions. So yeah, I would just suggest taking your five sounds and applying them to every sound you hear. And really listening to what it's doing and do exactly what it says. That's going to train your mouth muscles to do different things. So do you get going like that? Do you prefer to like actually focus on like doing what you're doing? When I just do that? Yeah. I just make it up as I go. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
They're all different. Yeah. I personally like Wes Carroll. If anyone knows who he is. Jake Moulton. Oh, guys. Yeah, I've yeah, like, seen but I don't Mosaic. He's the, be the beatboxer in Mosaic. Jake's really good. What, so uh, my two favorites are Jake, probably Jake and Wes. And they're two completely different beatboxers. Wes is a vocal percussionist. He can sound exactly like a drum set. Whereas Jake is a beatboxer. And he does all these crazy womp 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 beat sounds. They're very different, very two very different styles. But I learned to beatbox from Wes Carroll's DVDs. Like he has two DVDs and he's got like a ponytail. He made them in like the 70s or something. <laughs> and, and yeah, it's very very classic, very percussion driven. So yeah, they're they're two of my favorites. Favorite artist at the moment. Sarah Rose. Always. Yeah. She's my favorite. I just saw her again. I've seen I like we've performed together quite a few times. And I went to her book signing in Portland and I was like, Hey, I love you, remember me? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was like, she's very nice. But I think she is a true artist and I love her. Okay. Much. Okay. Going off of that, who is your favorite artist to like work with? Sarah Bareilles. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like, but one of my favorite performing moments, probably singing Stevie Wonder for Stevie Wonder. Oh. That was probably my best moment at the NBA All Star Game in like 2009, maybe. He was there, and we did a Stevie Wonder medley. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah.